Man, kick trap, I hate that. Oh, I, man, I thought that was a stagger. Oh, I'm on the wrong button. That's nice.
No, no, not that way. Oh, really, dude? I knew it was a bait. I knew it. Flask almost cost me. I wonder if that was like really random odds that he did those com that combo many times because he was getting hits, or if the AI was really actually adapting and it registered that I fell for that so it was going to try it again and again. That's what I'm thinking, because look how many times he's doing it.
Yeah, oh my goodness, he's done that combo perfectly where he like counters afterwards every single time suddenly. He's definitely learning. Oh my god, I was out of stamina! <laughs> oh! Can't choke, don't choke! There we go. Oh, it's so hard to not choke the last second. Especially when you have no Estus flaps and 5 HP. So there you go. That's how to... That's the strategy guide, at least. On how to consistently, at least or somewhat consistently, beat the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. It's quite an adrenaline rush. I'm just... Oh. oh. But how to beat him, you know, with nothing. I've the master's garbs on a little helmet and the shield helps in the first part but you can't even use the shield in the second part like pretty much ever I think I might have used it there once I don't I don't know though but yeah so the first part you can just learn his combos and as long as you stay close it's not that bad at all but the second part um, unless you have really insane reaction time and if you know if you're just amazing then yeah you can roll 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 and then swing here and there but the only way to consistently win is just to keep your distance and wait for the right attacks and just go for them. Um, the, being the spin attack, you can get a double, and then the jump attack, you can get a single hit. And if he does the ground pound, where he just like makes a black mist appear, 
which that's only triggered if you hit him in the butt when he's doing something else. Every now and then he'll trigger that, so it doesn't happen that often. And you always want to, when you hit him, uh, you want to come from the front and hit him, and then get your one or your two hits, or well, it depends on the attack. Okay, so if he does a spinny attack, you want to, as soon as it's done, come running around the corner, swing onto his leg, do another swing onto his leg, and then run past and behind him, because if he has to turn around to hit you, He'll do a slower attack, and it's a lot easier to dodge. If you run in front of him to get away for any reason, then there's a chance you can do a really quick slash from the right, followed by a quick slash from the left, and it's dramatically harder to react to. It happens really, really fast. And then for the jump attack, you want to uh, roll to his back left. So for you, you'll roll to the front right if he's coming straight for straight at you. And then you want to kind of position a little bit to the left. He starts the swing from his left and then finishes it on his back right to back middle. So if you're to his back left, as soon as the first spin comes through, I can see he does like a, no, he does one full spin and, and then ends. So he starts on the left, does a full spin to the left, continues the spin, and then ends it on the back right, does like 270 degree spin. Or maybe more than that, maybe like a 450 or something degree spin. Anyway, so you want to be to his back left. As soon as the swing behind him comes through immediately run forward and do a his left hand will come back like come returning on the left and you can just get a quick like charging slash on his left hand and then run and again go behind him because then if he does counter he'll do the slower counter and you can see it coming and just roll really easily and then yeah that's pretty much it those are the three openings other than that you just got to keep your distance and I don't know if it looked easy to keep the distance but it's actually really hard to keep the distance and then once he gets you cornered in a pillar if he gets you cornered like over here and he's like right here and you just gotta wait, it's actually way more dangerous than it looks because if he does his like forward stab like that that goes through everything you, and you can't really like, you gotta kind of peek around the corner like this and just kind of like look around and see him and then just, I don't know, because you have to see that coming. If you don't see the stab like that coming, you'll no matter what get hit by it. So those are like the clutch moments. If he ever got me, it all depends on his pathing because he'll roam to the front left or the front right and if he does it the correct way or at a certain a certain way then he'll end up getting you into a corner where he'll just be hanging around like this and you'll be back there and yeah so but yeah so that's that's how to do it it's real that's the only like safe way to do it. i mean you can just you know fight it and just be a beast and have insane reaction time i don't know i'm too old for that though i'm pretty old so i don't have the reaction time anymore like i used to so but if you don't have reaction time and you just got to do it based on preemptive stuff then that's the best way to do it really or one of the best ways, maybe there's a better way, but that seems like pretty much the best way. The first part's easy. Once you know all the attacks on the first part, you can just like not even I don't know, even with somewhat bad reaction time, you can just dodge everything and just keep hitting really fast to get through it super fast. But the second part, yeah, you just gotta wait for the openings, take your time, it takes forever, but it's what you gotta do. So yeah, there you go. That's that's how to beat at level level seventeen right here. Uh, beating the dancer of the Boreal Valley. So yeah, there you go. That's how to do it.